Hi folks, Joseph Kursky here with you, geographer, GIS professional, educator, to talk about what I call sleepwalking into the future. Sleepwalking into the future. Why the geographic perspective and geospatial technologies are critical to 21st century education and to society. Let's talk about these things today in our session. What is geography really? Why does geography and the geographic perspective matter? How can I use geographic tools to see the world in a new way? And also, I would argue, my community and every scale between community and our world, region, country, biome, world. What are the implications for ignoring geography? Why is it like sleepwalking into the future? And what does the future hold in terms of geographic technologies and literacy? Let's unravel those as we look at this landscape that I took here in North Central Texas. Now, what did your friends and family say when you announced that you were going to study geography or pursue a career that uses geographic thinking and geotechnologies? Did they say, why would you do that? Or did I have geography in the seventh grade? And is geography a thing? Is that an in, in-demand in career, etc.? Did you have a watershed moment that nudged you into pursuing geography as a career? For me, it was several things, liking to get outside, liking to make maps when I was a kid. And for more about that, see my maps I made as a teenager, videos and resources online. And also reading the book, The Last Great Auk, about the flightless birds that went extinct in 1842. And I would read that book every year as a middle school student saying, how can we let this happen? These were magnificent birds, went extinct on a single day in history. What can I do so that this won't happen again? What contributions can I make to the world? What positive impact can I make on the world where we don't have those kinds of extinctions and other trends that are going in the wrong direction on our world happening. Whoa, well, Joseph, I get from people, isn't everything already mapped? Why do we need more maps? Why do we need more geographic thinking? Don't we already know everything about our own planet? Sigh. Why is geography relevant to the 21st century? Well, let's name some key issues of our time as we gaze upon this landscape that I took a photo of in South Eastern Colorado. Ah, look at that. That's a beauty. Well, biodiversity loss, sustainable agriculture, population change, human health. We've all seen the JHU COVID dashboard that was made with geographic technology, specifically an ArcGIS dashboard. Energy, water quality, water quantity, natural hazards, political instability, climate. We could name others. Equity, population change, resiliency, and many more. All of these habitat loss, I mean, the list goes on. All of these issues, many of which are the UN SDGs, the Sustainability Development Goals, are spatial in nature. They are geographic issues. They have to do with scale, patterns, relationships, and trends that are often understood better in a deeper, richer way through the application of spatial thinking and geotech geotechnologies, geographic information systems, remote sensing, GPS, or more broadly, GNSS, Global Navigation Satellite Systems. So in sum, all of these issues have a geographic component and can be better understood and solved, yes, solved, with the help of geographic content, knowledge, skills, and the geospatial or spatial perspective. Now, why do I say solve? Because I truly believe in my heart of hearts that we've got some major issues on our planet, but we can actually solve them by networking together, sharing knowledge, sharing information, sharing tools, and applying ourselves to solving these critical issues of our time. I truly believe that. The world needs innovators. Be bold, okay? We need your contribution. We need innovators that can think outside the box, just like in the past. Eratosthenes measuring the circumference of the earth way back at 200 BC. William Harrison, the person that designed the, the Harrison clock to figure out where our position was on the planet in terms of longitude, saving people's lives being able to navigate safely, etc. William Smith, the world's first geologic map of the substrata, really created the whole science of stratigraphy. The, Beel the Beatles failed audition at Deca, Deca Records. The guitar groups are on their way out, boys. 
we need innovators that can think outside the box. This is not entirely a digression, including the Beatles. Geography suffers from the same lack of recognition about what it is and its contribution to 21st century society. Now, I don't want to, in this video, get into a whole discussion on the trials and tribulations of the geographic discipline over the centuries and even in our own decade. Rather, I want to present a positive, encouraging note to all of you that are thinking spatially, can think outside the box, can think in interdisciplinary ways, that we actually need you now more than ever. Geography and the spatial perspective, which is holistic in nature, it looks at the intersection of and connection of the biosphere with the lithosphere, with the atmosphere, with the anthroposphere, the human sphere, the cryosphere, the ice sphere, and all the other spheres, that they're interconnected. So if we affect one thing in one sphere, we're going to affect things that happen in another sphere. So variable A, if we tweak that, we're going to affect variable B over here. So we need that holistic perspective. We also need systems thinking, which is inherently part of geographic thought and the discipline of geography over the centuries. The systems perspective, the water cycle, for example, the energy cycle, the carbon cycle, that these, these are systems of systems that make up our wonderfully diverse, beautiful, wonderful, and troubled planet. So we need the geographic and spatial perspective now more than ever, folks. To ignore geography and the spatial perspective is like sleepwalking into the future. I'm blindly going forward into the future. I'm not thinking about systems thinking, holistic thinking, critical thinking, interdisciplinary thinking, and the geographic perspective. Perspective. That's what ignoring these is like to me. It's sleepwalking into the future. To our own peril, I may add. The stool of geoliteracy is critical to our 21st century world. The content knowledge is important. Soils, land cover, spatial statistics, the, the content knowledge matters. So focus on a couple of things. You students that are watching this, focus on a few things and make those one or two areas your specialty. But don't ignore the holistic interdisciplinary perspective. We need those people that can think big picture. Also skills, and I'm not just talking about geotechnology skills, but communication skills, being able to articulate why this all matters, what you do matters to society and why you need to articulate that to your supervisors, to your boss, to your board of directors, to your county commissioners, et cetera, your city managers, your CEO of your company, et cetera, your head of your nonprofit, your academic dean or provost. You need to articulate what you're, what you're doing and why it matters, what benefits you're bringing to your organization. So the skills matter being able to articulate a problem, being able to ask a good question, being able to use geospatial technology tools and other tools. And the geographic perspective also matters, as I hope I've made the case by now in this video, that that third leg is critical to this whole stool of geoliteracy. There are numerous examples. I've just got one here. Hong Kong, hmm, suddenly it's drifted over to Brazil. Hmm, interesting. Continental drift? I don't think so. We, we have a lack of geographic understanding of our world. It may not be so blatant as an error on a map. The more important issue is that we've got many people in society that don't understand the geographic perspective, and they're making decisions about land cover, people, environmental issues, etc., without this geographic perspective, and also without an Earth ethic, that they don't truly value our planet for the incredibly unique place it is in the cosmos. Now, the geographic inquiry process is critically important as you develop your skills going forward. You students, you're, you young professionals out there that are just embarking on your, your geospatial related technology uh, geographic career, you're thinking about this, maybe not purposefully, but keep this in mind. You're asking geographic questions in your daily work. You're acquiring resources, you're exploring that data, you're analyzing it, you're acting on the newfound information, the newfound knowledge that you've gained. And that oftentimes leads to additional questions like the scientific method itself. This is a takeoff on the scientific method and hopefully it will spur you into asking other deeper and related questions and, in, and then gathering data and repeating that process. So it's an iterative cycle is what we're talking about here. These skills are in demand, what we're talking about here. Spatial thinking, critical thinking, interdisciplinary thinking, problem solving, asking deep and rich questions. Take a look at this photograph. Today's aerial geography lessons. So these students are in the latest technology of the time. An airplane. Wow, cool. Uh, the student on the left, her, her head's on the desk. I think she's asleep. The, the teacher is pointing at a globe. None of the students are actually looking outside. So we can use new technology 
but we can use it in inappropriate ways. Okay, this uh, was from uh, 1920s-ish, 1930s, uh, reprinted with permission from Larry Cuban's Teachers and Machines book. The point is, let's use technology at our fingertips, AI-powered geogra geographic information systems, UAVs, drones, LIDAR, uh, satellite imagery, spatial analysis, spatial data in the cloud. We've got a lot of tools, field tools. We've got a lot of uh, com uh, digital communication tools, story maps, dashboards, instant apps, etc. We've got tools to gather, map, analyze, and communicate about geospatial patterns, relationships, and trends. Let's use those appropriately. Let's not use this amazing toolkit at our fingertips in a less than rigorous way, just like this airplane. Great that they've got the airplane, but let's use it. Let's get out. Let's, let's look outside. Let's look at patterns. Let's not use a, an established, old, maybe outdated teaching method. Nothing to say that a standard lecture about a certain topic is wrong. It has its place in education, but let's investigate. Let's ask questions. Let's observe with our senses, etc. So according to the U.S. Department of Labor back in 2004, there are three hot growing fields for the 21st century, nanotechnologies, geotechnologies, and biotechnologies. We are firmly anchored in the geotechnologies here in our discussion today. There is a geospatial technology competency model that we'll talk about here briefly, and there's also an NRC learning to think spatially report, which I highly encourage you to look at. It has to do with that we need geospatial thinking and technology throughout the educational system, not just in higher ed, but also in primary, secondary, undergraduate, graduate school, and lifelong learning, and informal settings as well as after school programs.